Um, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh, we're here uh, to talk about how to put together a competitive application to the TCBES program. Um, I'm Dr. Jonathan Price, the director of the program. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Wigner, the associate director. I'm the um, intern coordinator on the second alley. And, oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Shelby Iwamoro. I am um, with the UH Hilo Graduate Division. So we handle all of the um, admissions process for the program. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody, and welcome, everybody, online. Um, we will have time for some questions at the end. So, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of content in here. We will be posting the recording on our website as well, um, in addition to uh, a digital copy so that you can see all, you can have access to all of the, the links to the various resources that we're going to talk about. Um, that being the case, um, let's talk about the TCBES program. Um, I... I don't know why it's not. Uh, the arrows not working? Yeah. Oh, you have to. Where's the mouse? Okay. Yeah. So, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, here we go. So, um, minor, minor technical difficulty. So, um, uh, the TCBS graduate uh, program at uh, UH Hilo. Um, and, uh, and much of what I'm going to cover is, uh, is on our website. So that'll be link number one. That's going to be really useful, large number of resources and lots of other additional information about our program. Um, what is our graduate program? Our graduate program, the primary purpose of the master's degree in tropical conservation, biology, and environmental science is to provide graduate training in conservation, biology, and environmental science to people with baccalaureate degrees and others currently working in the field. The program uses the extraordinary biological, physical, and cultural complexity on the island of Hawaii as a focus of investigation and study. The program prepares students for natural resource management, technical positions, and for entry into PhD, PhD programs in related fields. Um, uh, both thesis and professional intern tracks uh, achieve the program uh, goals, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about those tracks here in a moment. Um, and again, our mission is to foster knowledge and theory of uh, techniques in conservation biology and environmental science, basic and applied science and socio-ecological methods, and to promote, promote scholarly activities in marine and terrestrial environments that enable students to pursue careers in research and natural resource management. Um, and, and I can't uh, emphasize this enough, we utilize the extraordinary bio, biological, physical, and cultural complexity of the island. We can think about this island, I like to think of it as the smallest continent. Uh, we have an entire continent's worth of climates. We have active volcanoes. We also have a very diverse uh, marine ecosystem. Uh, we have estuaries, coral reefs. We have freshwater ecosystems, streams, ponds, um, and all of this within an area where easily within a dr day's drive, drive, we can see all of this complexity. Um, and uh, this program has now, it's now in its 19th year. We will uh, be reaching our 20 year anniversary about a year from now. Um, we have had now over 200 graduates. Cohorts are about 20 students each, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less. Um, and uh, the program is supported by 45 faculty from across four colleges and numerous adjunct faculty from nonprofit organizations, government agencies, um, and, and various other organizations. Um, now, we do have two tracks, two different uh, tracks within the program, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to my colleagues here to talk about those tracks. So the first track we're gonna talk about tonight is the thesis track. Um, this is 30 credits of coursework um, and a thesis of original research. So when you apply to the TCBS program, it's important that you have reached out to a faculty member to see if they are accepting students. Um, and they would then, if they agree to be your advisor, they sign off 
on your application. So this is important because this differs from the professional internship track. And we have um, we've just put up three different examples of our students who have done the thesis track and the different types of careers they've gone on to. Uh, Randy Chubal um, now works at the Hawaii Department of Health Clean Water Branch. Um, Cheyenne Perry is now the director of the Mauna Kea Watershed Partnership. And then Troy Sakihara uh, works for Hawaii Department of Aquatic Resources. So our students go on to do really interesting and important things here within the state of Hawaii, within the region, um, within the world. Yeah. Okay, so um, the second track that we have is a professional master's. It's the track of this track started in 2018. And um, when it began uh, six years ago, it uh, the idea was that it would become um, uh, more rigorous than the previous internship track was. And so there's 30 credits that's required of coursework and a 600 hour internship in the I mean, internship. I was able to join. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, in a 600 hour internship and in your internship, you um, are embedded with an agency it can be a, a, a governmental agency. It can be a for profit business or it can be um, an NGO. And um, this is an example of three students that we had from our our, um, our first cohort. Uh, Vanessa uh, is getting her PhD and we've had other internship track students that have gone on to get their PhDs or in current PhD programs. But the professional masters is really set up for you to become a working professional. So if you want to get a PhD, it's most likely the thesis track is an easier avenue for you to get your PhD, but it's possible through the professional internship. And you can see at the bottom here, we do have um, things from uh, terrestrial to, to marine debris, to birds, to, to um, science education. So there's a whole range of projects and those um, we try to align the interest of the graduate student to the agency and try to make a match that way. All right, so where is it? All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so the application process. First of all, there are a few things um, that are that are just sort of our basic uh, our basic requirements in terms of how to apply. Um, first of all, you do need to have a baccalaureate or a bachelor's degree, um, uh, and uh, you need to know whether you're interested in the thesis track or the internship track because that is going to be part of the application process. And it's going to determine the kinds of things you want to do even ahead of time to be able to prepare your application. Um, you'll need a GPA of 3.0 for the last 60 credit hours. And that's one thing to emphasize here. Um, 3.0, as calculated for your whole GPA, is not necessarily what we're looking for. It's the last 60 credit hours. That may involve classes that you're taking at different institutions or what have you, but one way or another, the last 60 credit hours is what we calculate to determine that, that GPA uh, for that minimum of 3.0. Um, and then, of course, three letters of recommendation, and we'll talk more in detail about the kinds of things that we're looking for in those letters. Um, we do no longer require GREs. So the GRE exam, uh, there was a time when we required that um, and had minimum scores and things like that. We do not require that anymore to apply to the program. Um, uh, we do have, and this is another set of things that are also on our website in terms of more detail. I won't go into detail now, but we do have ways to pay for graduate school. We do have different funding uh, sources available. Mm -hmm. Um, we have graduate assistances uh, at UH Hilo. These are, um, in some cases, positions that will be something like a, a teaching assistant or working in some department to, to, to help um, the various functioning of, the, of that department. Um, we have some fellowships available through the Haoli Mauloa Foundation. Um, and this is for uh, students who uh, graduated high school in Hawaii. 
Um, we have a number of other student fellowships through partner agencies and organizations, including U.S. Uh, Geological Survey, um, the EPA, NOAA, National Science Foundation, and others. And those are going to vary year to year in some cases of what's available and, and what we can connect students to. Um, and of course, advisors, extramural grants. In some cases, if you have a thesis advisor, and we'll talk about that process of finding a good advisor, um, they may have grant money for their research that can then be used for your thesis research and to help fund you. And of course, there are all sorts of scholarships available to individuals. That being the case, really key thing, don't forget to fill out the FAFSA. The FAFSA um, is, uh, we've, 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 in, we've developed our deadlines to sort of coincide with the FAFSA deadline. Um, that way people are able to apply for financial aid as they're applying to our program at the same time. And that's going to provide a variety of other kinds of funding in addition to the ones that are specific to our institution. Um, preparing application materials. Um, so these are going to be the major things that you're going to be submitting as your application. And uh, there's a checklist and we have a, a link there. And again, that link uh, will be available to you when we post this on our website. And it is also on our website as well. Um, but uh, the, there, are, there are just a, a few key things um, that really are part of the application. Um, first of all, it is an online application um, and uh, it is now open for fall 2024. Um, uh, in addition to the online application uh, system itself, um, there are going to be a few things that you're going to upload. Um, uh, first of all, there will be some documents, um, uh, a, a curriculum vitae, and we'll talk about that, um, as well as a personal statement. Um, you will also get some requests. Uh, there will be uh, requested letters. These will be three people who you identify who will be sending letters on your behalf. Those letters will go to, um, uh, they'll get a, a, an email from apply hawaii at uh, liaisoncas.com uh, um, and, uh, and, and then they will be submitting those letters on your behalf. Um, there will be an application fee, it's a $50, a $50 fee to apply. Um, if you are taking, if you, if you are choosing the thesis track, you additionally will want to make sure you have connections with a potential advisor or maybe a couple of potential advisors, because having an advisor is a big part of being accepted to the program in the thesis track. Um, uh, in addition, you'll want to have your transcripts sent to the UH Hilo Graduate Divi Division. These are going to need to be official transcripts from all institutions previ previously attended or currently attended. Again, some people are taking extra classes after they've graduated in some courses. In other cases, they transferred from one institution to another. And so we, we need to have the transcripts from all institutions to be able to see the whole academic record. Um, and um, and uh, and again, these we we strongly recommend certified electronic transcript uh, and those to be sent to kilograd at hawaii.edu. Um, I don't know if we have somebody with their mic on. If we, maybe folks could um, please mute your mics just so we don't get uh, too much extra sound. Okay. Um, and. Um, uh, and again, these are these are the basic components, but we're going to talk about some of these in a little more detail because these are the, the heart of the application. Um, so uh, just as an aside, we do uh, we do have international students. We've had students from many different countries, um, including Sri Lanka and, and Papua New Guinea, among other places. Um, and, uh, and for those, there's a special process and, and particular um, websites that are geared towards guiding international students. Uh, the main things are um, they'll need their degree transcripts coming from their, inter their international institution that they got their bachelor's degree from uh, submitted uh, with an independent transcript evaluation service. Um, and, and again, there are links to, to find uh, those uh, uh, if you're interested in that. Um, official college transcripts in the original language and translations into English will be needed uh, for that. Um, and again, the information page will have the details of that. Um, 
Of course, only graduates from accredited universities will be considered for acceptance. Um, international graduate student supplemental information uh, and, and financial statement um, are also a, a part of it. Um, and there's a requirement to have TOEFL or IELTS scores um, for not for people who are non-native spe speakers of English. And again, all of this is um, uh, is uh, covered with links and, and ways to get further information in the international student uh, webpage for the university. Okay, so let's talk about these major parts that you're going to be submitting. Um, starting with this statement. Um, the statement um, is arguably the most important part of your application because this is your chance to tell your story and to point out the other parts of the application, the kinds of experiences you've had, the kind of preparation that you've had. Um, and, uh, and, and even more broadly, just thinking about the kind of program that we are, it's going to allow the admissions committee to assess your scientific curiosity. Are you somebody who's curious are you, are you interested in the natural world? Are you interested in, in protecting or preserving something in particular or learning more about something through the scientific method? Um, your passion for doing environmental work, right? What are the kinds of things that, that really drive you and motivate you? Um, your level of preparation, and I think this is an important one to highlight, being able to point the, the folks who are reading this, uh, this statement to understand how prepared you are for graduate school. Um, what are your thinking and writing skills? And of course, if it's well written, we'll be able to see your writing skills in that statement itself. Um, what kind of coursework have you had? Among the things on our website are some recommended coursework that, that we think would be good for people to have had. And so if you can point to the kind of coursework that meets the kinds of things that we would like to see, that's gonna be a good place to highlight that. Um, uh, and any on the job experience. Uh, maybe it was a summer internship program. Maybe you worked for a year or two at some sort of a natural resource management agency or environmental out, uh, outreach organization. Anything that you think is going to tie your story to the application. Um, your enthusiasm for studying at UH Hilo. We like to think we're a great place, but it doesn't hurt to tell us why you think this is a great place. Not just in terms of, yes, we have this wonderful outdoor uh, ecosystem, uh, you know, that really is a microcosm of, of, of again, a whole continent, um, but also what makes it a good fit for you? What ties you to this place? Um, uh, certainly, um, uh, think about your proposed field of study, right? So, you know, rather than, you know, focusing just on your story. We want to hear about your future, your ideas for what you want out of this program and moving beyond that. Um, so thinking about whether you're the thesis or internship track, um, that's going to be a big part of tying that into the application. If you're interested in a certain kind of thesis project, a certain kind of research that you might do with an advisor, you'll want to talk about that advisor uh, explicitly in this statement, right? Because you're going to want to, you know, point out that you've made this connection to the, to an advisor and you've done these kinds of things to sort of move in this direction of research that interests you. Um, by contrast, the, the internship, um, we have a wide variety of internship possibilities. We're, we've heard a little bit more about, we've heard a bit about those, we'll hear a little bit more, um, but think about the kind of internship you would like to have. Um, is it with an, uh, an environmental outreach organization? Is it in uh, marine uh, the, in the marine realm in some way? Are you interested in things that have to do with with people and the environment and agriculture? There are a wide range of different possibilities. And so the more you can get a sense of what those are and, and put your interests in that statement to tie you to our program so that we again know that this is going to be a good fit for you. Okay, um, just in terms of organization, um, you're going to want to write this in essay format, so not a bunch of bullet points or an outline format. You're going to want to write this as a story, as a narrative, um, and uh, it's going to be a good idea to kind of have it organized into some kind of introduction. You don't have to have subheadings necessarily, but an introduction, just kind of giving the basic background having a main argument uh, and a body, and then some kind of a conclusion, somewhere that kind of takes us through your, your past, your present, and your future. Um, 
that said, you are going to want to keep it to around one or two pages, um, uh, just so that we can, you know, sort of have everything in a, in a sort of concise place where we can sort of say, okay, here, here is this person, um, or about a thousand words. Um, the other thing I would say is be specific. Right. Tell details in those stories about experiences that you've had. Maybe it was a professional experience. Maybe it was something that happened to you when you were younger. Maybe it's something that's ongoing or something that really sparked your interest in a class. Right. It can be anything that is a, a specific detail about your story and your interests. Um, Another way to think about it, although I wouldn't write it as a series of answered questions, but the kind of questions you'll want to think about that we're going to be interested in knowing is what experiences have led you to pursue a master's degree in tropical conservation biology and environmental science? Um, and how did that prepare you? How did those experiences prepare you for graduate study? Um, what personal attributes make you well submitted, well suited and committed to studying and stewarding the environment? Um, what are your short and long-term career goals? Um, and of course, and, and again, this is where it's all about fit. How well do you fit this program? How will graduate study specifically here at TCBES, um, uh, be, being based on Hawaii Island, help you accomplish those career goals, right? So um, there are some common mistakes that we see. So this is a good one to think about, you know, things, things to, to avoid. Um, one of them is being too generic, right? Having something that doesn't have a lot of specific details about your life, just saying, hey, I've, you know, I've, I've studied, I did well in classes, I enjoyed school, right? We want to hear what those classes are. We want to hear what your experiences are uh, in a way that when we read that, we're going to be able to say, ah, oh, yes, this person, that was the person who had this watershed moment uh, while they were working in a watershed uh, as part of some internship project, right? We want to hear those kinds of details, right? So we don't want it to be too generic. Um, uh, we also want to be very clear, and this is going to be, be important, um, of, of, when we see an application where they're not really saying whether they're app applying to the thesis track or the internship track, it kind of gives us a sense that maybe that person is just sending the same statement out to a whole bunch of different universities. Where if, as we see a bunch of stuff saying they've looked at our university, they're serious about coming here, and they've gone to that detail of thinking about which of those two tracks they're interested in. Um, that's going to be one that's going to stand out to us. So again, and rather than making it general, that's making it very specific um, to the nature of our program. Um, and again, just being specific about why TCBES. Um, we are a pretty unique program in a lot of ways, and we, we pride ourselves on you know, the, the natural laboratory that we have and the, the, the special cultural place that Hawaii is. Um, and so for students from Hawaii, this is a good chance for, your, uh, your, you, for you to talk about your appreciation of Aina. Uh, and the world around you, and and uh, you know, thinking about your continued interest in working in Hawaii. For people outside of Hawaii, this is a, a, a chance for you to think about and maybe look into uh, the nature of people here and their love for Aina and Moana, um, uh, and 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 relate that to your personal story. Um, and thinking about you know how how you expect to to be in this place. Okay, um, for the CV, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Lisa. Thanks. Okay, so um, uh, a CV, or if you um, if you uh, want to think about it as like a um, very specific kind of resume, you want to um, definitely make sure that your name is on it. You'd be surprised how many people like actually like don't put their name on their document. But you, we also want to have your permanent address an email that um, will not expire once you graduate from school, right? So you wanna have that permanent um, uh, information on there and a good telephone number for you with, of course, the area code. The, section, the sections that you really wanna focus on is the education and you wanna go from what you, um, your most recent to, to going down. You do not need to put your high school on there. Some people do do that if they went to a particular kind of uh, more prestigious high school, but um, we're, you don't need to do that. Um, and then we're looking for your um, experience. And it can be professional experience that you have. It can be um, research opportunities that you had as, a, as an undergrad. 
Um, and it also can be perhaps um, uh, volunteer opportunities that you had where you're able to take that deep dive into understanding uh, in uh, NGO or or um, some other kind of, um, uh, of work that involves with conservation or environmental science. Um, if you don't, maybe your volunteer work is, um, is around um, something that's not exactly conservation or environmental science, you just would want to share that out so that you can, you can, we can see how you um, were able to gain professional experience from that and how that might make you a really strong candidate for graduate school. What is an NGO? Oh, sorry, non-governmental agency. So that's like your nonprofits. Yeah. Um, and uh, okay, so, um, and then we also are looking for if you had any opportunities to do, um, maybe co-publish an article or um, give a presentation to include those on your CV is also very important. Um, and any kind of honors or awards that you might have had it, have had an opportunity to receive. Um, if you, um, this optional part right here, like with certificates and um, licensure, uh, if you have your site diver, sharing that out is really important if you're going to be in the marine science department in the program. So you want to go ahead and um, add any of those professional affiliations. Let's say that you were part of a professional society or maybe you're part of um, AAAS. You'd want to put that on there as long as it's um, active and um, you list it alphabetically. And then if you have any kind of special qualifications, Maybe you're fluent in multiple languages. Maybe you are a coder. Maybe um, you have GIS experience or something like that. You want to go ahead and put those in your CV too. Um, and then uh, contact for references. This is usually um, optional, and especially because you're already you're putting giving in your three letters of recommendation, you don't necessarily need to have, to have that in there. But there's a nice little detailed one on the side there. Um, and I would say just have somebody second, you know, have second eyes on your CV to make sure that you have your dates correct and um, and that you may be somebody who knows your history so that you're not accidentally leaving out something that would be really important to include. So really trying to see that you're a well-rounded person. So when you're doing your CV to go by, you just basically want to put like anything that you have. So I wouldn't want to put like a Right. Or do you want to put all of your work history on there? I would say you I'm would. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Like if you worked at McDonald's, probably not. But maybe. But, but, but maybe if you had managerial skills and it's like showing leadership, maybe you would put it on. Depends how you want to use it to show the kind of person that you are. Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you. Okay. We done? I think that's it for this one. There's actually one more. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> no, I'm just pushing all the wrong <laughs> I don't use those. I just use the arrows in class. Okay. That's, why can't you see them here? Uh, because uh, it's weird. It's a okay. weird setup. Uh, here we go. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So common mistakes. Okay. No, we did that one. Oh, we did that one. Okay. Here we go. Okay. okay. All right. Um, oh, yeah. So um, uh, one thing that I don't think I mentioned is that if you did take special classes, that you might want to put those in your CV too that are relevant towards towards your um uh, going being successful at graduate school, um, and then of course, like I said, with the second eyes, you wanna you wanna make sure that you have those on there to make sure that there's no errors. Okay. So just adding, going back to that for just a second, I was gonna say like the relevant coursework. You might look at our website to see what classes we recommend for being successful in the program, and you might want to highlight those from your transcript because sometimes that information in the transcript kind of gets buried. But if it's something you want to bring to our attention on the CV, please feel free to do that. You know, like if you did take special specialized courses. 
Um, so the next part is your letters of risk recommendation. So who do you ask? You want to ask people who know you the best, who will write the strongest letters for you possible. Typically, this might be um, a professor in class who you've interacted with closely. Um, oftentimes, that might happen in a lab course where you work with them pretty closely. Um, it might be someone that you had an internship with um, or that you worked for professionally in environmental science and conservation. Um, but you want someone who knows you really well. Um, and they need to be able to speak about a lot of uh, important things like, um, are you personable? Um, do you play nice in the sandbox? Um, are you able to work independently? So can someone give you instructions and then you're able to go off and to work by yourself? Are you motivated? Um, are you dependable, organized, good at troubleshooting, good at writing, good at speaking? Um, your potential future contribution to the field, uh, your creativeness. So that person does need to know you very well to be able to highlight those things. So they, they have to have worked with you in a pretty close capacity to know these kind of characteristics about you. So if you haven't necessarily talked to a faculty member in class, they might not be able to say much more beyond what your grade is. So that being said, make sure you get to know the faculty members that you interact with them closely so that you have choices of people you can ask to write your letters of recommendation. Um, so when should you ask them? You need to give them plenty of time. So I would say as soon as you know you're gonna be applying to graduate school and you are seriously applying, that is the time to let them know. They need several weeks to be able to put that letter together and to get it in by the priority deadline. Um, the priority deadline for TCBS is December 1st. That is an important deadline to meet because it corresponds with financial aid and also gives you the first consideration for any of the funding opportunities we have, both graduate assistantships and the Habma Oli um, scholarships. So you wanna make sure it is a rolling admission, but if you get it in at the early deadline, that's when you're considered for all the opportunities because those opportunities might be um, taken by if you wait beyond that deadline. Um, most students do not see their recommendations. They waive that right. So the, the letter writer will get this link. They will write the letter and the student will never see it. How does the letter writer get the link? So you're gonna be filling out the application and you put in their name and contact and then it sends it to them. Um, and I think on the other end, you can see if that letter has been uploaded. So you can follow up with them to make sure they get it in on time. And don't be afraid to do it because it's really important that they do get them in on time. So a gentle reminder is always a good thing. Um, All right, so letters of recommendation, common mistakes, um, is asking people who don't know you that well. So I always feel terrible when a student comes and asks me to write them a letter of recommendation and I can't remember their name. So that's usually when I say, no, I don't, I mean, I'll tell them I don't remember their name, but it's usually, um, you know, obviously I don't know you well enough. Is there somebody else that you could ask who's really worked with you much more closely? Because if I can only comment on your transcript and the grade you got in class and we haven't interacted that much or like had conversations in class, it's very hard to write a strong letter because the transcript already says that. It needs to be something different than what's being shown on the transcript. Um, you can't ask your friends or family. Um, it has to be someone either of an academic or a relevant professional nature. Um, so that being said, make sure you get to know your professors um, here at UH Sheila really well. Uh, spend some time making yourself stand out, ask questions in class, go see them during office hours, see if they have potential volunteer or paid opportunities um, or summer internships. Um, and you want to have at least, and preferably two, letters from your academic contacts. So a third one can be from someone else, but you do want to have people that you've worked with closely at the university being able to write your letters. Um, Work-related references unrelated to TCBS themes 
probably not the best recommendations because you want the people to be able to speak about your academics and your ability to perform and contribute to um, environmental science and conservation. That's me? I don't know. All right, so if you are thesis track, um, one of the major things you need to think about, right, because um, in order to be accepted in the program, you need to have a faculty member who is willing to take you on as their student. Um, so who do you want to be your advisor? Um, so you need to do your background research. So on our website, we have a list of the participating uh, UH Hilo faculty who participate in TCBS um, and their contact information. So, and it'll tell you a little bit about their research interests. So kind of honing in on who those people are, doing your background research on what they do. Because if you're gonna reach out and communicate with them, you wanna make sure that you've really done your homework about what they do and how you will fit into their research program. Um, so go to their websites, look for their publications, and think about how you will fit into their research group, how are you are going to contribute, you know, with your interests, your work ethic, all those types of things. Um, and maybe, maybe what are you thinking about for your thesis? So students can come in with their own original ideas and seek out funding for that themselves. Most students come in and work on a grant that their advisor has written. So the initial ideas for the project are set out, but you do the actual execution. So like, don't feel like you haven't contributed because the actual doing and the writing up is a very big deal. The proposals are just the initial ideas, but you're gonna flush it out and make it come to life. Um, some of the things you need to ask, you know, what are their expectations of a graduate student? So you want to be able to reach out to that person, have a conversation with them. It can be on the phone. It can be through email. It can be through Zoom. Um, I would say best to, to be able to either speak on the phone or Zoom um, to really kind of get that. Ask them what their expectations are for their graduate students. Each faculty member has different MOs and expectations and how they interact with their students. And if you can, ask them if you can speak to some of their current or former students. Get the lowdown. This is going to be, while it might seem like a short-term relationship, two to three years while you're doing your thesis, this is a lifelong relationship. They are your professional cheerleader from that day forward. And you want to have a very, very strong relationship with them. So you want to make sure that not only your research interests are aligned, but your personalities are a good fit. And the other students will give you the lowdown on what it's like to work with them. And that's really important. Um, and then you need to kind of think, you know, what are your expectations for an advisor? What kind of person um, is a good fit for you and how you work? You know, are you very independent? So a hands-off advisor would be good. Or are you someone who needs a little more guidance? Um, and different faculty operate in different ways. And what do you want to get out of graduate school? What are you learning? What kind of experiences do you want to get out of? Making sure that you express that to your advisor so that if there is the opportunity, they can provide that experience for you. Um, how are most of their students funded? So again, like when you're coming to graduate school, how is it going to be paid? Um, do they have extramural grants? Um, will that extramural grant cover salary? Will it cover project money? Um, is there opportunities to travel? So those are different kinds of questions. Um, and do they currently have funding to support a student? So grants come and go. So not every year, every faculty member is accepting a student. Um, so you do need to reach out because, and different faculty kind of have different philosophies about taking students. There are some who are willing to take students without funding. And there are some faculty members who will only take students when they have funding. So talking to that faculty member um, is important. Um, and are you a good fit? You know, like I said before, this is a lifelong relationship. You know, understanding what your personality type is, kind of seeing what their personality type is, um, your different uh, work modes, will that be a good fit? Um, it's important that you get along and that you are intellectually um, in sync. 
All right, so what do you do? First thing, once you've done your research and you have a list of names of people you wanna to speak to, um, you need to email them. So it's gonna be writing a cover letter as an email. Um, and send them your CV and specific details about your interest. So it's not necessarily your personal statement that you will submit when you apply, but you need to get them interested in you as a person and as a potential student. So what do you need to tell them about yourself that's going to hook them in and get them to respond back to you? Now, that being said, people are inundated with hundreds of emails. So if you don't hear right away, that's okay. Just send another reminder email. Um, and then if they don't respond after so many, well, then that kind of tells you maybe that person's just too busy and wouldn't necessarily be a good fit for you. Um, if they respond, if they take the bite, um, arrange an opportunity to meet with them. Um, with today's technology, if you can, like in person is the best, but we live in, well, not I don't know who it all's on Zoom, but if you're here in Hilo, then you can go knock on their door and get to meet them. If not, a Zoom call is really good um, or even a phone call, but it's good to see people's faces and how they react to the different questions that can tell you a lot of information. Um, and it's a two-way interview. You're interviewing them to see if they are a good fit for you, and they are interviewing you to see if you are a good fit for them. Um, so um, that's a very, very important conversation. You want to make sure before that you've really done your homework um, about them so that you can have an educated discussion about your, your research interests. All right, and if you are professional internship track, so it's a little bit different with the internship track because you don't need to um, uh, be recruited um, by your internship uh, uh, potential play placement. What you do need to know is what do you want to do while you're here? Like, how do you want to commit to um, the, the island or the agency? And how do you want to contribute to the greater good? Um, so uh, one thing to do is to go on the TCBS website and see what internships have happened in the past, what have past students done, and is there a fit there for you? So we recommend you doing that. We also recommend that you do some research to learn about the agencies that are on the island and in the state. You don't necessarily have to do it on Hawaii Island, but you do have to do something that's conservation, um, conservation biology or environmental science related. Um, and then uh, if you have any kind of questions about um, what you're thinking about, just email me and we can set up a, a little Q&A and we can talk about it. So, um, but I, wanted, I do want to put this caveat out there that um, when we are working with agencies and um, nonprofits, we're ask, it's a big ask. We're asking them to take you on for about a 15 week at 40 hours a week internship. And so not every, just like not every professor, but um, not every agency has that capacity to do it at that time. So you have to have your, your first choice, second choice, third choice kind of thing going into it. So that's something to think about. All right. Okay. And uh, again, we will be um, uh, providing this um, uh, this presentation along with the active links for each of these things. We do have a couple of additional links uh, for how to put together successful graduate school uh, applications. And of course, you can contact any of us uh, who are running the TCBES program. Uh, again, I'm Dr. John Price, uh, the director, uh, Tracy Wigner. Lisa Canali, who you've just been hearing from, and of course, the ever important Shelby. Shelby is going to be handling those applications. She's gonna be tr keeping track of who's submitted what, um, did those uh, transcripts come in, did the letters come in, et cetera. And if you have questions or un you're unsure about something with the system, Shelby is gonna be a really uh, important contact, okay? Um, from there, um, we're happy to answer any specific questions. And uh, folks online, uh, you can put those in the chat if you'd like. Uh, we do also have folks in the audience, and we're happy to answer questions. Um, let's say you start with the internship program. Can you change to the thesis program later, or are you basically committed to doing? Yeah, it's, or it's very difficult. 
um, we have had students that have gone from thesis to internship and from internship to thesis, but you, um, it, it, it really has to happen within the very first semester. And I would say if you um, don't have that thesis advisor, um, it, it's, it's going to be so difficult to, to have it change. Um, we had one student who ended up doing, starting off with marine debris and went into, uh, as an internship, and went into looking at using um, heat work to figure out where the marine debris was. And so she ended up moving into a thesis track with the computer mm -hmm. department. Um, and I think that was, I think that's the only one that went the other direction, but the, the coursework is um, a little bit different, so that's yeah. kind of where it becomes hard, so you would have to have a faculty member agreeing to take you on as their student, and some of the coursework that you would have taken maybe as an internship student wouldn't necessarily, not all of them could count towards the thesis track. Yeah, um, so the internship track doesn't mean that you're not going to do research. Um, it's really up to the agency and, and you, but um, we don't want, we really want the internship to be, to put your envelope at your learning opportunities, um, but also to be a, a service to the agency. We want it to, whatever the work you do, to live beyond your 15 weeks with them. And so, um, and that's that's really critical that it has legs after you leave. So if it's, if you have like a scientific curiosity that isn't going to serve the agency, it's, it, you might not, you might not want to do an internship, right? So. Okay, um, we do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, first question, is the GA application open for the next academic year yet? It is not. Uh, if you have already applied, we will let you know when that does open up. Uh, the applications for the GA ships are separate from the, ap the applications for the program. That's an important thing to consider if you are interested in pursuing those, uh, those kinds of funding opportunities. Uh, it is a, it's a separate electronic system uh, for uh, applying to that. We will send notice out uh, to people who have already applied so that they know that that's now open. Um, and if you are applying, you'll see um, in our website that it is now open. So we will be sure as soon as that's open to notify folks as best we can. Okay, hopefully that answers uh, your question on that. Um, another uh, question, where will these slides be available? There will be a, 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 there on our main page, there's a link to apply to TCBAS. It will be on that page. We will also have a link video, a YouTube video of this presentation, which we are now recording. So uh, the main page uh, of TCBS, there's a link to apply to TCBS. That will be the, the page where that will be. Um, another question, um, uh, for the internship track, do you have connections with offices in fish and wildlife? Yes. Yes. Easy answer. Uh, there are many agencies, many agencies on this island. And in some cases, maybe we just haven't happened to have somebody uh, associated with that agency yet. Um, I think that the list of agencies we work with grows every year. Um, and certainly Fish and Wildlife is one of those. So easy answer, yes. Okay, next question. Um, what are the types of GA ships offered? Um, it varies a little bit from year to year which positions we have. Some of them, as I said, are something more like a teaching assistantship. You will be working uh, with directly with classrooms. Maybe it'll lead, be leading a laboratory section for a class. Maybe it will be assisting with field trips and other hands-on activities because many of our classes have that and having a, a, a GA to assist the professor is a really important component of making those field trips work. Um, they, um, uh, there are others that are basically service that's helping our program run. So helping upkeep our website, helping to do social media and outreach and other kinds of things so that we can, you know, make sure and broadcast to the community the kinds of things that we've got going on. Um, so those are the main GA ships we have. Again, the Haoli Maoloa Foundation fellowships are technically um, uh, GA ships, or they're they're funded as GA ships. Again, those are that's a program that is for people who went to high school in Hawaii and want to give back to the community. Um, that's the other major type of uh, GA ships we have. Um, 
hopefully that answers that question. Um, next question, uh, you folks mentioned uh, not to put our high school education on CV. Does that include college courses we took during high school? I would say if you took college courses during high school, absolutely put that on there. That's going to flag you as somebody who is who is charging forward. Um, and uh, and I think that would certainly be a situation where it would be appropriate to talk about an experience you had during high school. Um, similarly, the yeah. yeah, they should be on your transcript. But if it's um, something you want to point out. Or yeah, you might point it out. I would also say this is a good time to point out sometimes there are unique experiences or things like that. It may not be apparent to, to us what it means when you took one class uh, or two classes from a certain institution on your transcript. You can let us know in your uh, in your personal statement to help us point point us to that fact that you took classes uh, college classes while you were in high school and these were the classes or maybe you had some kind of a special uh, a special job or internship experience um, while you were in high school as long as it's related to the program and our goals that would be a good place to highlight it and again you can have it in the cv but you can also detail it in your personal statement and point that out to us and then we can see that in the cv and see it in, in maybe more than one way okay great questions um, um, another question, also for the internship track, do we have to choose from agencies in connection with TCBEF program or an agency that our advisor can recommend or a nonprofit that we have worked with and want to focus on and contribute to? I'll let you answer that one. Uh, yeah, you don't have, you can, you can come with your own ideas. Um, the other thing too is, um, as long as it's, Within that realm of conservation, biology, and environmental science, you don't necessarily have to do it on this island. We've had people go back to their home countries and do their internships, and um, and we've had people go back to their home states and do their internships there also. So, but but most of them are. But most of them are on on this island. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, you guys are, are hearing all of these answers. Um, any other questions in the chat? Okay. Uh, any... A couple of things I'd like to add to. Oh, us. okay. We have some. We have some added comments from. Coming from the peanut gallery. In the peanut gallery. gallery. My name is Terry Chong, and I'm retired from the TCBES program. And just some nuts and bolts about your uh, the writing tips that you folks were given. Um, it is not necessary to put your high school in your CV, but if you want consideration for the Haole Maloa Foundation yes. Fellowship, you must have graduated from a Hawaii high school. So, you know, you, you might want to, if you did, you might want to include it that for that reason. When you're writing about your interests and, it's, and stuff, your hobbies and whatnot, um, there are certain things that because of civil rights, we're not allowed to ask people in job interviews and stuff like that. Like for instance, your marital status or your age. So be careful about how much of yourself you put forward in your personal statement and your, <clears throat> and your CV and proofreading. I cannot emphasize strongly enough, <laughs> take out all the comments, all the track changes, all the little bubbles in the, in the margins with question marks and what are you talking about? You don't want that because if that comes in with your CV or your resume, you're sunk. No matter how good you made your, your CV look after all those comments were addressed. And contacting your, your potential advisor, use your subject line very judiciously. Put your name, potential advisorship or something like that and always use that same subject line when you're trying to connect. Again, if, you're if your advisor has it contacted you yet because it'll it'll just they'll all pop up in their email together and i can't emphasize enough again contributing to the greater good is huge with this program it, it just doesn't get any more important than climate change thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay um any other questions from folks in uh in the room with us here today Okay. Um, any further questions online before we convene? Okay. Um, well, I, had, I had a question. Sure, yeah. I'm Howard, by the way. Uh, thank you. Appreciated the presentation. 
Um, so I'm a, um, I'm about to graduate my botany degree at UH Manoa. Um, and I live, I actually live over there now. I'm kind of between islands, but I, I don't know what track would track would be best for me in my situation. Cause I went to school on, on Oahu and not over there. So I don't really know advisors, but would I have to form those relationships like with those advisors in the department or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say start by looking at our website and it's going to give profiles of all of the people uh, in our program. Again, we have 45 participating faculty. So we have a wide range of, of the kinds of research that people do and the kinds of interests that people have. So I would start working through that. And, you know, like like Terry said, put that in the tagline, botany student interested in working with you in the thesis track, right? Something like that says a little bit about yourself, says a little bit about what you're interested in, they'll know that and they'll, you know, be able to respond and say, well, I'm not taking any graduate students right now, or, um, hey, yeah, let's talk, right? So just initiate those conversations with um, with faculty that seem like a fit for your interests. And, and okay. I was here at UH Manoa, maybe you're, the faculty you work with there you know some of us, and that makes a very strong contact because then oh. they about you to your potential future advisor and that's worth more than anything that would yeah that's that's probably very yeah so if you're in the botany program you know they may say well don't talk to don't talk to dr john price uh talk to somebody else uh, or maybe they'll tell you i don't know um yeah. but, uh, but you know we we are we are sister institutions we do know each other and uh and so that's another good way is word of mouth um, where where we do have relationships, that's a good that's a good another good way to to sort of you know open the door and uh, and initiate contact. Um, we have another um, question online. I hope did we answer your question, Howard? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, another question online: Is there flexibility to conduct online coursework if working on West Hawaii or internship route uh, or an outer island? Um, uh, the, 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 the easy answer is yes, but um, uh, our core courses, so your first year of courses are in-person courses. Um, and, uh, and those are gonna be courses that you're gonna need to physically be here in Hilo to do. From there, there are some courses that you will be able to take that are either online or flexible, but that's on sort of an individual basis in terms of what professors are offering. So we cannot guarantee, for example, that we will have, you know, you know, a large number of courses offered online, uh, 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 online compatible or online entirely, but we have continued to have, you know, one or two courses. That said, those may or may not be the courses that you're interested in. So we may, you know, one semester offer, you know, for example, we're going to be offering a, uh, an online course in marine conservation, but if you're somebody who's interested in botany or you're interested in something you know having to do with terrestrial ecosystems then then that you know even though it's online that may be not be in your interest area so yes there is a little bit of flexibility but it's hard to predict what those courses are going to be and and what i would say is yeah there is the potential for flexibility but we really um pride ourselves being in person hands-on outside um, you know, really interacting with the community. That's a, that's core to our mission. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Um, any other questions online? I thought I started to see a hand go up in the audience. No? Okay. Got one right here. Right here. Oh, oh, there we are. Okay. This, this is what happens when I wear my reading glasses and look out at a, at a crowd. Yeah, sure. So are you thinking that, like, is there a cost difference between the two tracks? No. Well, so well, the, yeah. Okay. So the internship track um, requires six additional credits, so it is more expensive that way. Except the fact that with thesis track, you can take an unlimited number of seven hundred um, thesis classes. So uh, for some reason, let's say you don't get your permits and you are in your research is is slowed to get off the ground, you could end up paying as much or more than to get your internship credits because yeah. your research gets extended out. So yeah. you have to stay enrolled <laughs> credit until you graduate. So sometimes with these track, most likely 
sometimes things take a little bit longer than expected. So you might finish all your coursework, but you still need to stay enrolled. And so that could go on, right. you know, a semester, another year, right. depending on how long it's taking yeah. to wrap things up. Yeah, I would say that the, the, the one way of thinking about it is semester to semester, it's the same cost, it's the same tuition cost. How long you're here in the in the internship track, it's, you know, I would say most people are finishing in two years, occasionally going into another. Thesis track students do tend to take a little bit longer. They don't have to. So thesis track may end up being a little bit, uh, you know, shorter with, you know, fewer credits taken, um, or it may end up being a little bit longer depending on the kind of project you have. But on a, on a, on a semester by semester basis, um, they're the same, they're the same tools. I was just, just thinking, so like once you're full time, you don't pay for credit. So it might not be that different between the two tracks that way. Yeah, right? so the, the full time tuition, even for grad students, kicks in at 12. So um, anything above 12 will not be an additional charge. The same like on undergrad tuition. Mm -hmm. credit for full -time it is, it but is. for tuition, it's different. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yes. Okay, um, yeah. but it depends on how many credits you will be registering for that term. Yeah. Okay, um, another question online. For volunteer experience, should you include community workday or more research-based volunteering? I would say both. I would say yes. Anything that relates to the program, community work, things that are environmental outreach, maybe it was something for you you were paid for, maybe it was something you volunteered for. Um, especially if it's going to be something where you did enough in that where one of your uh, recommenders, one of your letter writers can say a lot about that work that you did. Um, keep in mind, we have a wide range of students with lots of very different backgrounds, um, different interests and experiences. Um, some people maybe are really good students, but they're only just now finishing their bachelor's degree and they haven't had a lot of experiences um, and so they're, we're going to want to see a little what experiences they've had, but they may highlight one thing in their uh, CV and um, uh, in statement and letters uh, compared to somebody else who maybe took classes, you know, finished school a while ago. We have students who maybe have finished their degree some years ago. Um, maybe, you know, they were a reasonably good student, but in the meantime, they've done all of this environmental work. They, maybe it was research, maybe it was something more applied where they were doing some kind of on the ground management. Maybe they were working with seabirds, maybe they were working with dolphins, right? It could be any number of different things. Those experiences, um, especially, you know, if you feel like, you know, um, the other parts of your, your uh, application maybe aren't as strong, get those experiences out there. And so I would say yes to any experience you can put on there, uh, again, to, to balance out, you know, uh, so that we can see, you know, both the academic side of it, your coursework, the degrees that you've had, but also the kind of experiences that you've had that relate to the program. Okay. So we are coming on the five o'clock hour. Um, any further questions before we close out? And again, you can feel free to contact any of us. Um, and uh, and again, uh, our webpage has lots and lots of materials, tips, uh, links, all kinds of things to help you uh, to have a successful application. Uh, we hope to see your applications. We look forward to those. And we really thank you for joining us here today. Mahalo, everybody. Mahalo, thank you. I'll be reaching out to you guys. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Done. Yes. <laughs>